This plan arrived to us as broken as you see it. Uh, we're going to go through the steps to restore it to seamless repair. First thing you do is cleaning it up with alcohol. We use alcohol 91%. Pour it on the rug as you see here. Wipe the surfaces as thoroughly as you can. We use a container filled up with uh, pebbles, PVC pebbles, that uh, will be able to hold the plate straight up, enabling the next piece to stay up with gravity, as you see in the next section. This is a broken piece, and uh, a dry run it before you deal with glues or anything as such. Just make sure that it fits properly. There are no particles stuck in between and it's ready for the glue. One of the epoxies we like is made by a PC epoxy. It's called PC Clear. Extremely durable. Um, yellow very little. The least amount of yellowing that we know. And it can be purchased anywhere. Again, it's PC Clear by PC Epoxy. We like to warm our epoxies. This is a wax warmer. We heat it up to about 120 degrees. It makes the epoxy more pliable, squeezes better, minimizing the hairline in between the pieces. You don't have to do that, but definitely don't work in a room that the temperature is less than 70 degrees. So we are ready to mix the epoxy, two parts epoxy. We use a 3M um, sticky notes to do all of our mixing. Easy to dispose. The PC epoxy we use comes in two separate containers. It's the same, it's a PC clear epoxy. Uh, you apply even parts. Part A, part B, and you can mix with a wooden stick, or what we use it's a pottery pin tool to mix. We usually go both orientation, right to left top to bottom, clean the tool and ready to be applied. We like to apply the epoxy onto the piece that is not stationary. As you can see we use the same pin tool. Uh, remember you have only couple of minutes to work with before the epoxy is not pliable. It began to cure so you have to calculate your timing. Um, you apply generously without making a mess. And of course make sure that you mix enough to allow it to spread to the complete surface area. We sort of know without measuring, we've done this tens of thousands of times, so we have a good idea of what it should be, but it's better, I guess, to have more than less. Once you put the epoxy in, you place the piece on, and you squeeze really hard, making sure that everything is aligned. You take um, the rug with alcohol, the 91%. You don't have to clean the, the glue. Sometimes it makes a mess, it smears all over the place. So you just clean two areas. So you can feel that it's lined up without touching glue. And then you move it until it's all lined up. Perfect.
and don't clean the rest of it. We're going to show you later how, how to uh, take the excess glue um, in the next segment. Thank you. After the epoxy cured for at least an hour, it's better to let it dry or cure overnight. It would be easier to remove, it won't be sticky. Uh, the way to remove it, we use a blade such as this. Uh, we bend it a bit to give it some angle, as you can see here. Make sure you wear protective glasses. Um, and that band gives it better access to take the epoxy off. Sometimes when we have a lot of epoxy removal to make it easier, we hit the epoxy a little bit with a small torch. So it comes off with less effort. I don't suggest you do that, but just for you to know if you have a hard lump that too hard to take off, you can heat it up with a hair dryer or a little torch. So here is all glued and you can see that the repair line is visible, there's some missing chips and in the back you're going to see that it's missing a big chip like so. So uh, we're going to talk through how to fill each part of it, the big gap in the airline crack. But the first thing to do is to clean it using uh, alcohol, again 91%. Clean the surfaces. So the filler that we're going to be using next would adhere and bond better. The filler we use is um, also a product that make is made by the same company that made the previous epoxy we use to glue the plate. Uh, it's called PC11. It's two parts filler epoxy. You can see it's sitting in a wax warmer to heat it up to approximately 100 degrees Fahrenheit. It makes it more pliable. You don't have to do that, but make sure that it's at least at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Note that all the degrees we mentioned in this tutorial is in Fahrenheit, for those of you who work in other countries, not in Celsius. Um, here's the temperature, um, it's about 100 degrees. What you use is the same paper, 3 by 3 inches, or 2.5 by 2.5. Um, you use this tool, you take the amount that you need, and you mix it well. Okay, so what do we do with the big gap right here? We don't have the piece. Um, we use clay, We, being that we're sculptors and potters as well, we have a kiln, so it's easier for us and the quality of the product is better, uh, not by much, but better if we make the piece that is missing. I'll show you how we do it. If you have access to clay in a kiln, that's a good way to do it. And if not, next segment I'll show you how to use the filler. So we take the clay, we push it in, take sponge with water, and we work the clay into the ceramic. I'm rushing a bit just to not take too much of your time. I'll do this again later more accurately, but that is the piece. Once it dries out, oh, it's just going to fall off. You put in the kiln, fire it, and um, glue it in just like the first piece. 
So the clay piece to fill the big gap dried out. It's being removed. And here it is. It's going to go in the kiln and get fired if I choose to use that. The alternative would be the filler, which you're going to see in a moment. To fill larger gaps, uh, we use a PC super epoxy if the provision to use clay and firing is not available to you, that would work. Uh, so again, it's PC super epoxy. It's come in a syringe, two parts, even parts, and um, you squeeze some, you mix. The spin tool is one of my favorite tools. I use it for so many applications. Um, you mix until the color is even, the blue disappears. Again, both orientation mixing, X and Y. Um, you make sure the surface is clean. And the benefit of that filler is that it has a body, it stays, it doesn't drip, it doesn't matter where you put it, it stays. So that would be what I call rough fill. You fill it, and then later on you have to go and use the PC11, the wider filler, which is a finer filler, to fill all the little imperfection of the uh, PC Super Epoxy performance. Again, you can see it's not a perfect layering. Sometimes what we do is we take alcohol, 91%. We pour some, I give my finger in, create a, uh, a layer so the epoxy won't touch my, not attach to my finger, and you can smooth it if you touch it very gently. Some people use spit. Okay, so the filler, the rough filler, got cured enough, it's still a little bit um, gummy, but good enough to apply the PC11, the finer filler, over it. But I want to emphasize again, when you apply the PC11 on the airline crack, like you see now, what the action you take with the tool is you pushing it in, you've got to squeeze it into the crack not just writing above it and leave it slightly higher than the height of the ceramic don't scrap it off completely um, then you take bigger, bigger chunks of PC11 and you fill it in you probably have to do it a couple of more times after you send it down but this is just to give it the the shape that it needs to be and fill up all the big gaps. Notice that when I put the rough filler I make it sink a little bit so the PC11 would cover it totally. Uh, it sends much better so you don't want to sand the rough filler. It doesn't sand as well or a smooth surface as the PC11. So this is good for now. As far as curing it, you can let it be in a room temperature of 70 degrees Fahrenheit or greater for uh, 24 hours, sometimes longer, to be sanded. If you want to expedite it, what we do is we put it in an oven. We heat it up to 140 degrees um, at, um, overnight. Six, seven hours would be sufficient. Or if you don't have an oven, why should you, for that purpose, uh, put it under a swing light, uh, like an office light lamp. Uh, let the light bulb, it needs to be in condensed light bulb, at least 60 watts that it would generate heat. Let it be right above the plate, um, not any closer than 6 inches. It might overheat it. Give it at least 6 inches distance and it should be sufficient to be sending overnight.
uh, or the next morning. Thank you. Here is a PC11 under a lamp, Q ring. This is a 75 watt lamp. You notice the space is about 8 inches. If it's too close, the plate can heat to 200 degrees and the PC11 would soften up, not cure. It actually would get um, possibly affected negatively. Six, seven hours like that should be just fine. The plate is already warm to 10 minutes. This tutorial does not address painting and glazing. It's just a filler, gluing, filling, smoothing, sanding. You're going to see the next chapter. But if you want to give the filler, the PC11 mix that you see here, some color, you can use natural pigment like this one. You, there is no true white. You always have to add some color, whether it's light yellow and um, ochre, um, red, blue. Different plates has different pigments, although it appears to be white, but it's never real white. So the way you add it, you can add pigments, just like I do now. Total should never be more than 5% of the total PC11. It's going to start weakening its performance. But I put some red and I mixed it. And then you check it against the item that you broke and fixed to see that it can get close enough and not be too obvious that it's been repaired. Note that painting and glazing give you precise control of the colors. Pigments do not. It's just going to get you close enough, but it's better than nothing. So once you mix it, you fill it in just like you've seen before. And remember, I forgot to mention earlier, the PC11 is good to be applied only within 20 minutes of mixing. Even though it can still feel applicable, it's really not. It loses its bonding and... Um, it's not that um, easy to use once you wait 20 minutes, so maybe half an hour. Just dispose it and give yourself a new mix. Okay, sanding. We use uh, four steps. Um, we start with a Dremel, just gets you there faster. You can do it completely by hand. You can use a Dremel. The mechanism that we like a lot, although we have others, it's the um, Dremel Easy um, set. It's a, it's a head that you can remove the disc and put a new one that looks just like that. 120 grid. That means 120 granules per square inch. Um, and when we send it, you see next, we are very careful not to touch the surface of the ceramic with that. We just take the very high level. Then we go by hand using 220 grit. We cut them to small squares. This is 400 grit, much finer. And then finally we use um, what's called macro mesh. 3200 grit. It's extremely fine. It's a silicone base. It is sort of a shock absorber and it gives you glass-like surface when you're done. Uh, for most things, for home items, you don't need that. This is a lot of work. Um, we use it to a very high-end pottery uh, and we skip the, two, the 220. Uh, we don't want to scratch the surface or very expensive items. We start with that and of course the work is much longer but it is required. But follow the first su suggestions one, two, three, four, that's the way we do it, or skip that one and two, and three if you want to, if you're that perf perfect about your work, that would be sufficient. If it's not, you can do wet sending with that. It's going to be almost like that, but not um, as glassy. Sending. Uh, we're going to start with a Dremel. That's an easy lock mechanism. As you can see here, that's 120, 120 grit. And the way it goes is just like so. And it's locked in place. 
I'm going to send just a little bit for you to get the idea. Remember that uh, don't go fast, go at a slow speed, um, maybe the first 20% speed rate, you're going to hear it as I do it. going to focus on one segment you do the whole thing with the dream mill and then you go with uh, 220 grit sandpaper I usually fold it to F so my finger would not slip as I do the work and the key here is speed you go fast try to stay only in the area where the damage is don't try to go everywhere there are some ceramic that are soft. Obviously, this is not the right method for that. You're going to scratch it. Maybe you want to do a little test to make sure that the glaze doesn't get scratched. Um, again, uh, you can see how I go fast. The reason why you go fast is so you won't stay in one spot too long. And then you're going to take off what I call the acid. The acid is the filler. You can see here that stays in a very thin film that fills the gaps or maybe you have tiny step between part A and part B you want to fill that transition with a ramp if you go too local you're going to remove that ramp and you have to refill again later because you're going to feel the step right now I don't feel the step so when I'm done with a 120 I check it I rely mostly on uh, touch not visual at this point and then I go with 400 it is finer it's 400 grit I fold it and again I go fast and it is much smoother now and the last step is with a micro mesh 3200, it's extremely fine, 3200 grit in. I stay with it a little bit. And then when I'm done with the whole plate, whatever item you repair, 91% alcohol, you clean the surface, and it's ready for painting. Okay, a few other pointer I forgot to mention. Always wear a mask. Um, that should not get in your nose. Whether it's safe or not, uh, you know, you can have silicosis if there are silicon parts in the, in the filler and you just never know. Safe, safety first. Um, another pointer is if the filler is not cured enough it's gonna be gummy it's gonna get stuck to the sandpaper very differently it's gonna clog the sandpaper this is not clogged so that's when you have to stop heat it for another day or wait for another day or two or perhaps you didn't mix the ratios accurately you put less of one part and that would be a problem so make sure you measure the 50 50 as close as possible to the right ratio Once it is all sanded, we inspect it. We use UV light uh, in that probe. It's a dentist dentistry equipment. If you don't have that, oh, why should you? You can use a, a big flashlight in, and then you angle the light along the repair line and you're looking for two things, one of two things. You're looking for a step or for a, for a pit, for a hole. Um, Without that light, you can swear that it's perfect, but as soon as you put that light on, you're going to find a few things. So you fill them again with PC11 mix, and you repeat the process for those areas that you had to refill missed area. Um, you may have to do the third and the fourth time, depending on your proficiency in 
your expectations. Um, this is um, best level repair expectations. We may have to go more than twice. The final step is painting and glazing. We use airbrush first for the background color and then we use brushes uh, for the uh, for the detail painting if it requires that. Um, we let it cure for a while, for a few days and then we do glazing. Um, glazing and painting is uh, that's a glaze room. Um, they're more difficult to give a tutorial on YouTube. What I suggest is that you go to our website lexitepottery.com look under repair lessons and we have pretty comprehensive lessons about painting and glazing. Thank you for listening. The next segment would be a studio tour. If you're interested, um, stay on. Okay, brief studio tour. Clean room for glazing in um, metal airbrush application like gold, silver, etc. Door is closed most of the time. Painting area for airbrushing, mostly in this right side. Left side, detail painting. Uh, use acrylic, mostly. We use other painting as well, depending on the application. Dirty room consists of grinding, sanding, brazing. We do um, bronze and other metal sculpture repair, small kiln for uh, pieces that we sculpted, missing pieces, legs, horse's ear, nose, fingers, whatever. Um, here is the oven that I mentioned earlier that hits our work for expedition. It cures much faster, our acrylic paint dry faster, so we can push things through more effectively, reduce the lead time for customers. This is a workbench where we generally do cementing, um, filling, and fine sanding, final sanding. Um, this is the uh, wax warmers that we use for the epoxies and the filler, PC11. Uh, more supply cabinets here. This is where we take photos for the finished work to show the customers how it looks before they conclude payment. Um, packing room. Items ready to be packed, going to be packed today and shipped tonight by UPS, different parts of the country. Boxes, 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 incoming projects, unpacked, going to go in the queue soon. Computer area for estimates, etc. Um, work in progress, all those projects here and here. I've achieved a couple of steps and they're waiting for the next step. Um, what we have here is we do kintsugi, which is mending broken pottery with gold or gold equivalent or silver or whatever other metals. Um, it's a Japanese metaphor. And um, I won't take you to the pottery room. It's not applicable for this uh, session, but we do sculpting, commission, custom-made pottery and other clay work.
This plate was repaired a few days ago, uh, as you see in the illustration above. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark it with a magic marker where the repair took place. And then I'm going to break it with a hammer and see how the break lines behaved. If it breaks in a new place other than the marks, then we know that the cement job is stronger than the ceramic itself. I'm going to mark it in the back too. And I'm going to take a hammer in a moment and break it. Okay, this is a test. Here's a hammer. I'm going to break it. Try this piece first. Obviously it's strong. One break. That's the other break. And as you can see, it did not break where the glue line is. Here's a glue line, meaning the cement job is stronger than the plate itself. So here it is. Actually, it performed much better than I thought. So I'm impressed myself. Uh, there is only one point here. Can you see here? where it follow the break line but then the rest of it it broke in different places so this is what we do um, if you have any questions you can email us studio at